Hi there, Advanced Hire. This is um, your recorded lesson for this week. And this week we're moving on to a topic uh, area called Simple Harmonic Motion, uh, SHM. And you'll find this in page 70 of your textbook. I'll put the page numbers at the top to let you see which pages for each of the different parts. So, um, the first thing to say about Simple Harmonic Motion is that it's about oscillating systems. So as the slide says, simple harmonic motion refers to an oscillating system in which an object vibrates about at equilibrium position under the influence of an unbalanced force. Now a simple example, had I been in class, is I would use my keys or a, a ruler or something. But I'm just gonna, I've got my keys here. So um, a simple example would be, simple harmonic motion is a swinging pendulum. An object is swinging back and forward um, about its equilibrium position. Equilibrium position is being that, that's equilibrium, and if it's given any um, any distance away from equilibrium, that's either this way or this way. Now, the other, the, it says there, um, influence of an unbalanced force. This unbalanced force is always directed towards equilibrium position. So if we hold the keys like that, and it's swinging back and forth, the force is always towards the centre. So if it is swinging that way, the force is down towards the center. If it's swinging that way, the force is down towards the center. So the force brings it back down in each case. And it's proportional to the object displacement from the equilibrium position. What that means is, the further this is away from the equilibrium, the more force it experiences. So that's less force than that there would be, because that's more force back down to the equilibrium position. This also works for um, a ruler. Now, I don't have a ruler at the moment. Um, just pause this, see if I can go grab a ruler. I found a ruler. Okay, so this would be the ruler. So as the ruler oscillates like that, back and forward, I'll do it this way in front of my face, there we go. So as it oscillates back and forward, so the further away from the equilibrium, the more force. Now, if you get a ruler and do this yourself, you'll feel it. So if you just move the ruler away a small amount from its equilibrium position, then you don't feel much of a force on your hand. If you bring it quite far away from the equilibrium position, you feel more of a force on this hand here and on this hand here. So the further it is away from the equilibrium position, the more unbalanced force it experiences and the force is always back towards that central position. So as it says that examples of a simple motion include a mass or a spring, um, which is something oscillating up and down. Now you'll see that in the textbook, some diagrams and stuff like that. Um, a vibrating rod, which I just showed you, and a pendulum, which I just showed you. Okay, some of the formulas we have here. So um, we treat this very much like um, a rotational and a linear um, motion equation. So we start off with the amount of displacement. So Y is displacement about the centre point. So um, that's, if it starts off here, the amount of displacement that experiences, so that is a maximum displacement, one direction, maximum displacement, other direction, zero displacement. Maximum, maximum, and zero. So the amount of displacement, the amount of y, is equal to the amplitude of that oscillating system. So this would be maximum amplitude. So maximum amplitude would be the highest point and minimum point, times sine omega t. So what we're saying here is that the displacement is a sine function based on the maximum amplitude. So a sine function is a wave going up and down. So at maximum amplitude, then the sine omega t is, uh, a sine omega t is maximum and um, in both directions. So a sine omega t is the function that describes the motion, simple harmonic motion, and y being the amount of displacement from its equilibrium position. And in this equation, a equals the amplitude of the oscillating system, the maximum amplitude that it's experiencing. Not what is it at that point, because that would be y, but what is the maximum amplitude that's experiencing at any given, in any given time. Um, so we take this formula and we differentiate it, like we would do for linear equations or rotational equations, we differentiate our formula and we get um, v is dy dt, as you would normally, and a sine omega t gets differentiated with respect to t, and we get a cos a omega cos omega t. So if you want to know the velocity of an oscillating system or the, a point in the end of the oscillating system at any given time, use that equation. We can then work out the acceleration of an oscillating system. And again, we differentiate that one more time. 
So with respect to T, so the dV would be T, and we, get, we differentiate A omega cos omega T with respect to T, and we get minus A omega squared sine omega T. Now, since Y is A sine omega T, the displacement, we bring that back down, we can substitute that in, and we get A is equal to minus omega squared Y. So that allows us to get the acceleration without having to go through the sine or cos function. Now, this bottom bit here is that, so when um, Y equals A, so when y equals the maximum amplitude, the acceleration is at a maximum. So the maximum acceleration is your maximum force. So your max acceleration is going to be when y equals a. So at the very top of the motion and at the very bottom of the motion, the acceleration experienced by the system is the maximum. Take the key, so example, maximum displacement maximum acceleration so it experiences the most acceleration when it's the furthest away from its equilibrium position okay moving on we're going to talk uh, about a specific example and this is for a rod end or end point so this is for the point on the end of the rod or the end point to a pendulum so for this one here um, the velocity so if we go back, uh, the velocity is a omega cos omega t. We know that already. We got that from the first slide. And we're going to say that um, the velocity is going to be either side of that. So its velocity could be either side of that equilibrium. So could it be a positive? It could be a negative, depending on where it is compared to the equilibrium position. And we're going to take this omics cos omega t and we're going to substitute in a sine function instead. So if we look over here, um, you should be familiar with this formula for maths. We rearrange this formula to get cos omega t, which is the root of 1 minus sine squared omega t. So we take 1 minus sine squared omega t, and we substitute in instead of cos omega t. Now, since y is a sine omega t, which is what we know already, we can then substitute that in, this here, into this formula here, and we get this here. So this is what's happening here. We square both sides. And we can get this here subbed in. But what we're doing is we're saying, well, sine squared omega t, which is this part, is y squared over a squared. So we just take this part and we can substitute in y squared over a squared using this here. We can then take this and we can multiply it out and rearrange and simplify and boom, 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 boom. Just follow the steps all the way to the bottom. And we get this formula here for the velocity of an end point of a rod. Um, or end or the, the end of the rod or the end point of a system as this here. This is the velocity at any given time depending on, um, and it could be positive or negative depending on its positive or negative direction away from the equilibrium position. This is in the tutorial. Uh, this is a, one of those questions where you're not given this formula in the exam, but you're expected to work through this definition and get that formula at the end. You've done these loads of times before, so if it's asking you for this in the tutorial, then you follow these steps. Okay, so simple harmonic motion and energy. So energy, this is on page 74 of your textbook. As simple harmonic systems vibrates, energy is converted between potential and kinetic. <coughs> now, it's not potential energy as you would normally say it is. Um, it's potential energy as in stored potential to do work. So take the ruler again, uh, and it vibrates back and forward like that there. At the very top of its motion, it has it gains potential up here it gains the potential to do work and it slows down to zero and um, so it's got zero um, amount of kinetic energy at the top zero amount of kinetic energy at the bottom but maximum potential to do work it's not gravitational potential it's just potential to do work so it gets the maximum potential to do work at the ends and maximum ek in the middle and zero potential to do work. So as it oscillates, it goes from maximum kinetic, maximum kinetic in the middle, to maximum potential, and all the kinetic turns to potential, to kinetic, to potential, to kinetic, to potential, to kinetic. So the total energy at any given time through that whole journey is going to have to be whatever you, kinetic energy you have and whatever potential energy you have. So this point in the middle, it's maximum kinetic. This point at the end, it's maximum potential. Anywhere in between that, it's just the addition of the two to give you the total energy that the system has. So we're going to take the end point here as an example, just as I'll explain in there. 
So two parts to it, how do we get EP and how do we get EK? We need to get EK first. So EK is a half mv squared. Um, we'll take a linear formula for that. And we'll sub in the velocity for the end point of the rod, which is this here. We did that in the last slide. And that's squared. You can then simplify, rearrange, multiply out the brackets, etc. And you get this formula here. EK is a half m omega squared a squared minus y squared. Now, when y is 0, EP is 0. That's what I've said. There's y is 0, EP is 0. EK is max when... Um, EK is max in the middle, sorry, when y is 0, EK is max, EP is 0. So EK is max at that point there because y is 0. So EK being max ends up being that formula there. When y equals a, when y equals the maximum amplitude, EK is 0, but your EP is max. So that's just what I explained at the start there. So potential energy, not gravitation, stored energy with the potential to do work. So the due to the conservation of energy, total energy equals max EP. So the max potential energy is also going to have to be equal to the max kinetic energy. So the max potential energy it has here has to be equal to the max kinetic energy it would have here as it's oscillating, conservation of energy. So EK is max when it's a half m omega squared a squared. So that's this here. So your max EP must be the same value. So if your total energy is EP plus EK, which is this here, then your EP must be your total minus your EK. Now, therefore, your potential energy is your total energy. Your total energy has to be this, because that's the maximum you could ever get, minus EK energy, which is just this formula put back down in here. So potential energy at any particular point is the maximum energy, which just so happens to be this, minus the, the kinetic energy at any given point. You take that formula, you multiply the brackets, and you get this formula here for EP, a half m omega squared y squared. Now, the last part to this is something known as damping. You need to understand the definition of damping. So, friction causes the energy of a simple monic system to decrease to zero. Energy is converted to heat and given to the surrounding. So, this is your oscillating system, but friction causes that to drop to zero. So, just like that, it drops to zero. Um, damping is the process of applying a force to remove energy from the system. So, in a ruler like this, the force comes from the, the structure of the ruler. It also comes from air resistance, um, the, the plastic the ruler is made from. It doesn't want to oscillate like that forever. Examples of damping include car shock absorbers, bridges, bungee cords, trampolines and diving boards. Types of damping in symbolic motion systems can be referred to as under damping. So it's not enough damping and the thing keeps going. Over damping, in other words, something to stop it and it stops far too quickly. Or critical damping, which is too much damping so all the energy has been removed. So if I just hold the ruler, that's critical damping. I can't, it won't oscillate because I've dampened it too much. Over damping, just a bit too much. It still does it, but it slows down too quickly. Under damping is not enough. So this will give you all the information you need to answer the two tutorials. This week, um, I want you to work on doing the two tutorials during the week, and we're going to something new next week. I'm going to give you a little bit more work to do this week. On Thursday, I'm going to give you an assessment, a couple of past paper questions, and I want them handed in. And I'll also give you the solutions to this week's tutorial um, towards the end of the week as well. But the, the marking for Thursday will be done by myself or Mrs McLaughlin, just to see how you're getting on. There won't be solutions posted, I think. I think we need to give you some stuff with unseen solutions. And see how we go. Okay, any questions get in touch and we'll have a drop-in session on Thursday morning for anyone who wants to come in and ask any, ask any questions.